In this video we are going to explore something called the cast diagram and I'm going to show you exactly why they called it or why they called it the cast diagram. So if I gave you this coordinate 3 and 4 what that would mean is that this point is 3 units to the right like that and then 4 places up. So we could also say that this length down here is 3 and this length over here is 4. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the origin and I'm going to connect to that point there and then go down and then do that. And now we've just made ourselves a triangle. And so to find the missing length, which is this diagonal, we can use Pythagoras. And so let's call this R to represent the hypotenuse. And so we can say that R squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. And that's going to give you R squared equals to 25, which means that R is 5 if you had to go and take the square root. And so now what we're going to go do, and oh, we're going to just call this over here, we're going to call this angle theta. Now, we're going to go find the sin of theta, the cos of theta, and the tan of theta. Now, a problem I have with many teachers in this situation is they teach students how to use Sokotoa in the previous section, like where we were working with triangles. Then when they try work in this section, they change it up completely. They now try, try and expect students to remember that sin is now going to be x over r, so not x over r, um, y over r, cos is x over r, and tan is y over x. This isn't wrong, because now when we're busy on this diagram, we have x's and y's, because we have the x axis and the y axis. But this often confuses students, because now they think that this is a totally new section and they have to learn new things. I always tell my students, if you're comfortable with Sokotoa, then use Sokotoa, even now, because I promise you this x, y, and r technique, and that's why I went and used an r over there, I usually don't do that, just, I just wanted to be mathematically correct according to how most of the teachers are doing it. Um, but it's not the way that you have to do it. So, Sokotoa can be used, or you can use the Y, R, and X method. The only reason they're not using Sokotoa on this diagram is because we have X's and Y's. But if you want to use Sokotoa, trust me, you can use it. You'll get the same answers, okay? Because the X, Y, R method does have its downfalls. There are times when it can completely confuse you. So let's go use sin. We're going to go work out sin theta. Now we know that sin is opposite over the hypotenuse. And the angle that we're using is this theta over here. So the opposite, that's going to be 4 over the hypotenuse, which is 5. If we do cos, cos is the adjacent, which is 3, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. And tan is the opposite, which is 4, over the adjacent, which is 3. And so in summary, we see that all three of these answers are positive. And so in this first little triangle, sin, cos, and tan will be positive. So now we're moving on to this next quadrant over here, where I've made my little dot. And so you would agree that this length is 1, 2, 3. That's why it says negative 3 over there. And then the... Going vertically, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And so that length over there is 4. And so we can construct ourselves our triangle. So it'll go like that, and it'll go down like that. Now, the way the car system was invented was that you always begin your angle starting on the x-axis over here, and then you go round, 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 until you hit that line. And then that whole angle inside there, we'll call that theta. But don't worry about that. You're never going to use it like that, really. What I want you to do is just always pretend that the angle that you are using is inside there, okay? But the, the theoretical way to do it is to use that whole angle on the outside like that. And then, yeah, so when you see it like that in textbooks and things like that, that is correct. But that's not the way that you're going to calculate everything, okay? So now we know that this length over here is, we said that this length is 3 and this length along here is going to be a 4. But because this x is going into the negative side, we'll call this negative 3. Now I do know, well I've, I've heard about it once or twice, some teachers don't like it if we put the minus 3 like this. And I understand what they're saying. What they're saying is that this length, the length is not minus 3, how can a length be negative? That length is 3. So what some teachers prefer you to do is just to put a 3 over there. And then to show that it's a negative, you label this coordinate here as minus 3 and 0. I'm 99% sure that your teacher is going to be okay with just using the negative 3. 
It's just some teachers are very theoretical and they can't stand it if you don't obey the theory perfectly. But don't stress too much about that. So in summary, we know that this length is 3, but we'll just put a little minus 3 to remind us that it's in the negative x. And so as with what we did in the previous example, we're going to go use Pythagoras now to find this length over here. And so we're going to say r squared. There I'm using the r just to stick to what your teacher might be using. And that's going to be equal to 4 squared plus, this one's a negative, so I'm going to just put it in a bracket. And that's going to give us 25 on the right hand side. And if you take the square root, you're going to end up with 5. And so that length over there is 5. Now we're going to go and do sin, cos, and tan, but remember, just base everything off of this angle over here. I promise you this works. Teachers in class do this anyways, but they just don't explain to you the big difference between this angle on the outside over here, and that often puts students off. So we're basing everything on this little red angle here. So the sin of that, well, sin is opposite, so the sin of that angle... See, notice what I've done here. I've called it theta, which is this big angle on the outside, even though we're going to be basing our calculations off of this red one, okay? There's a whole big theory behind this whole thing on how this cast diagram was invented, but it's not necessary to go into that. It would take it would take at least 20, 30 minutes of explaining, and it's not necessary to understand that right now. So the sin, sin of theta, well, we know that sin is opposite over hypotenuse, and so that's going to be 4 over the hypotenuse, which is 5. The cos of theta is going to be the adjacent, which is minus 3 over 5. And the tan of theta is the opposite, which is 4, over the adjacent, which is minus 3. And so it looks like the sin is positive, cos is negative, and tan is negative. And now moving on to the third quadrant, where we've got minus 3 over here, which would imply that this length over here is 3. But we'll just write a little minus 3, just to remind ourselves that it's in the negative x. And then 4 units down. So we'll, we know that that length is 4, but we'll just call it minus 4. And as I said, some teachers get a bit uptight about that, but don't worry. Don't let that bother you too much. You can just write it as minus 4 over here and minus 3 over there. Most teachers, however, use the minus 3 and minus 4 method. Now what we can do is we can create ourselves a little triangle. So we'll go down to here and back to the starting point like that, where this angle, well, this angle is 90 degrees. Then we said that the way this this technique was invented was that you always start here on the positive x-axis and you go all the way around, all the way around, all the way around until you hit your line over there. And then that whole big angle there on the outside, so all of that we're going to call that theta. But remember when we're doing our calculations we're going to base everything on that little corner angle over there. And so we could use Pythagoras again to find this diagonal, but what you would find is that that's going to be 5 and that one you'll always keep it as a positive. And now we can go calculate sin, cos and tan of that triangle. So we say sin theta. Now notice I'm using theta once again, which is technically that big angle on the outside. However, just pretend, just work inside this little triangle that we've created and start at the red dot. And so the sin is going to be the opposite. So the opposite of that red dot is minus 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. If we look at the cos of theta, well that's going to be minus 3 and the hypotenuse is 5. And then tan, we know that tan is always opposite over adjacent, so the opposite is minus 4 and the adjacent is minus 3. Notice that these negatives are going to cancel. And so it looks like sin is negative, cos is negative, but tan is positive. And finally, we're going to move into the last little quadrant where I've got this dot here, and its x value is 3, so that means that this length here is 1, 2, 3, and then it's minus 4, so it's 4 down, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and so for... We can make ourselves a little triangle like this, which is a 90 degree triangle. This length over here will be 3, we here we'll say minus 4, although its length is 4, we'll just use the minus to remind ourselves that it's in the negative y axis, and then if we had to go do Pythagoras, we would end up with 5 over here again. Then remember, technically the angle goes all the way around, all the way around, all the way around until it hits this over here, and that whole angle we're going to call that theta, however we will base all of our calculations on this little corner angle over here. And so let's start with that. So the sin of theta, well that's going to give us opposite. So the opposite of that red dot is negative 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. The cos of theta is the adjacent which is 3 over the hypotenuse which is 5. And then the tan of theta, well tan is opposite which is minus 4 over the adjacent which is 3. And so it appears that the sin is negative, cos is positive and tan is negative. 
and I forgot to fill in the previous one so we said sin was negative there cos was negative and tan was positive and in this quadrant sin is negative tan is negative and cos is positive and so have a look here here we are finally going to get to the reason why we call it the cast diagram in this quadrant here so this quadrant number one all of them are positive so we put an A for all in this quadrant here only sin is positive so we'll put an S in this quadrant here only tan is positive so we'll call it a T and in this quadrant here only cos is positive so that'll be C and if you read it from here it goes C A and then it goes to S and then to T, and then back to C. And so people call it the cost diagram.